Alphabet, Google broke some news, new Pixel 6 coming out, and they are going to go on the route of following Apple and making their own chips. What's going on, Pat? So I think a, a little bit of background before we uh, dive into it. So uh, from a market share perspective, uh, in the U.S., uh, Google uh, Pixel has between 1% and 2% market share, depending on, on what service you look at. So they really are a very small player out there. When you look at uh, Apple, you know, at around 50%, Samsung, there's a chance, though, with uh, LG exiting the market at, at around, you know, 3 to 4% market share that they could get uh, a jump uh, on this. But... Uh, what Google is doing, um, you know, jives with uh, what we're seeing a lot of companies do in that they want to have their own special sauce. And in this case, Tensor stands for essentially uh, the AI capabilities, the inference capability. And, you know, you might be thinking, well, you know, the company has absolutely no uh, experience uh, in uh, in in chips that they, they actually they actually do and you know Daniel you wrote uh, a really good uh, article uh, up up on Mark Market Watch kind of going through it uh, but we really have to ask the question hey one or two percent market share and maybe it's a half percent or lower globally does it really warrant uh, some type of custom processor even if you know the only custom part is is the tensor piece I do believe that. Samsung did the integration on this, and it's, there's likely an Exynos CPU, and and uh, likely, I mean, I'd, I'd be surprised if they picked anybody else but Qualcomm uh, for the modem, uh, but but we'll see because Samsung hasn't actually shipped hasn't actually shipped a a millimeter wave uh, capability, but um, you know I, I can't you know necessarily fault just out of default. Ooh, wow, fault out of default. Google for doing something like this because whether it's Microsoft, whether it's Sony, whether it's AWS uh, or Apple, but we have seen companies that don't necessarily want to invest a whole lot. Uh, even Xiaomi said it was doing going to be doing all these custom uh, types of things, and that that fizzled out. LG said they wanted to go custom, and they ended up just abandoning the the in, entire space. Right now, this looks to me as a serious. Hail Mary, hey, it's what Apple's doing. Let's throw the long ball. I could see if they they bring this processor to their smart home products. That would make sense, right? A really giant tensor processor uh, on 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 the edge. But aside from that, it it first it strikes me as a as a money pit. Yeah, great analysis, Pat. Look, I'm I was super skeptical and bearish on this. First of all, um, you know, when you have less than 2% of U.S. market share and less than 1% of global market share, um, it seems like it's either, you know, a massive risk or like you suggested, just a pure Hail Mary. Um, a lot of the commentary, read in a, a Wired piece about this, the commentary was from the executive at Google was more or less that they didn't feel that off the shelf enabled them to do the things that they wanted to do. And I kind of said to myself, okay, great concept, but for who? Because who's using these devices? Um, I've never met anyone using a Pixel. That's actually a true story. And so Google, you know, of course, is a company that wants to win in, every, in any and every category that it competes. Um, and maybe, like I said, at this point, working off the shelf, um, typically, by the way, being a bit of a laggard with its processors and its flagship devices uh, has, not, has not been able to grab the market share, has not been very successful. I do think there's a bit of a, um, you know, leapfrogging attempt with Apple in the sense that with Bionic, and Google wants to say they can do it, we can do it. Um, I would say to the positive for, for, for Alphabet and Google is I do believe their AI cores are very capable. And in fact, what most people don't realize, like you said, is they've been doing this in the data center and they've actually been using cores in their phones up to this point, but nothing has actually been better than what has been available off the shelf, certainly available off the shelf from Qualcomm and Snapdragon. Last point I'll make here really feel like the big mistake that is speculatively out there because we don't know for sure but there are rumors on the street that uh that they're going to abandon the qualcomm 5g rf modem system which 
with Millimeter Wave is an incredibly complex technology, both to develop and also to certify with carriers around the globe. Again, if no one's using your phone, I guess that doesn't actually matter that much. But if you want people to buy and use your phone, if you want people to buy and use your phone, you want it to be certified on all the majors. So on whether that's T-Mobile, Verizon, AT&T, Orange, whatever you're using and wherever you're using, it has to work. Going away there, it's kind of like, why would you do it all at once? Like I kind of understood, you know, using cores, like you have great image sensing, maybe you have great training for AI, natural language processing, start implementing your cores. Apple did this really well, but I'll leave it at this. Even Apple knew its limitations and it said, you know what, we'll stick with Qualcomm a little bit longer. We know they've got that part of it right. We'll build around Bionic, we'll use Qualcomm. And it's not like it's a permanent arrangement, but right. But they didn't do it until they were ready. And so even with M1 and all the work they did, they Apple has done a pretty good job of making sure they've been ready and that that period of time where people can really crap on their product is very short. And they and they made the, the fixes very quickly.